First of all, welcome everyone to our annual event that uh, has been going on now for about the past 10 years. We started recognizing those athletes that are going to go on um, and have made a commitment to play at the collegiate level. Some of these athletes have already formally signed with their college. Um, some of them we had, a, uh, the parents kind of set up something in the Rams den and we, we've done that. But this gives us an opportunity to see everyone um, and uh, get them all to sign together. We'll get a group picture at the end. Uh, the other thing we like to do is just to get to know them a little bit and, and uh, have them uh, introduce themselves a little bit by asking them a couple questions about uh, the school they chose, where they're going to, uh, and so forth. There are programs over there if you didn't get one. Um, I do want to uh, let you know I did a lot of work putting those programs together. Good night, Sam. Yeah, good night. Give it up to Sam DeVore, Sam. Sam DeVore. But keep in mind if something is misspelled or messed up, Sam was also responsible for that as well. I do apologize to uh, Ronnie. Uh, somehow we missed him in the program. I'll make out another one and we'll get his name in that. We are going to recognize him today. Um, we, we didn't uh, get his information via email. Got lost somewhere in the uh, transition. In the program, one thing I would like you to recognize is that when these individuals um, and the senior class started four years ago as freshmen, um, they put in a lot of hard work, a lot of time, commitment, and so forth. And due to their accomplishments, if you look on the back of your program, you will see that during the four years that they were an athlete, we have earned 42 conference championships. It says 41 because we got golf today. Our golf team won the OK Red Conference Championship, but there might be a couple others I missed today. So. And again, this is today, many of our spring sports, we, are, we have high expectations that they will continue and uh, move on. 22 district championships, 23 regional championships, and 14 state titles. Let's give it up uh, to this group. Uh, these seniors were a big part of all this. Yeah. I do want to thank the parents, the grandparents, the uh, siblings and so forth for here. Special uh, shout out to our coaches. We have a few of them that are here uh, and have put a lot of time in with your son or, uh, or daughter and get them prepared and get them ready uh, to play at the collegiate level. Um, so I do want to uh, thank them for coming and, and those that weren't able to make it. We all are, are, uh, are grateful for all the things that our coaching staff does uh, in getting our athletes ready. So what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of call them up in groups. We've got some uh, places up here just asking a few questions. When they come back down, then we'll wait and we'll all sign at once. Um, but uh, in order to do that, we, we'll need the lights turned down. Give it a couple former interns that I in charge, put in charge of lighting. All right. So we are ready now for our first contestants. We're going to bring up the basketball players. We have three basketball players. Let's give up the basketball. Hang on up. is going to Hope College and play basketball. Uh, Ryan, uh, first of all, uh, welcome, welcome everyone once again. You are, uh, uh, you know, when you went through a coaching change this year, um, Coach Klopp has uh, seemed to maybe energize some things, brought some excitement back. Tell us a little bit about the uh, that coaching change and how it, uh, how you went through it, and, and uh, maybe just a little bit about Coach Klopp and maybe what you foresee happening here with Rock and Basketball. Yeah. Uh... Coach Glove, he came in and um, brought a lot of energy and focus and great attention to detail for our program and really changed the culture and stuff. And he's really 
dedicated to his job, and he's, he's going to do great things for us. So, yeah. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about Hope Basketball. What do you know about their program? Maybe tell us a little insight why you chose to go to Hope. Uh, they won two MIAA championships in a row, made the uh, Division three tournament two years in a row, and they're on the upswing. So it's a great program, and it'll be a lot of fun to play there. Now we had some former Rams play there. Is there any left there currently? No, they're all, they're, they're all, they're all moved on. Um, what's your favorite part of playing basketball? Something you look forward to um, that uh, really excites you about playing basketball? I mean, I've just been playing for a long time, so it's just the love of the game. Being with a bunch of guys that like, it's really fun. If you were to uh, maybe choose one player, uh, professional, college, uh, somebody out there that you kind of look up to and try to model your basketball talent, who, who might that be? Um, I'd say uh, Miles Bridges from Michigan State. Miles Bridges from Michigan State. Hey, this is uh, Ryan Dam. He's going to Hope College. Get up for Ryan. Next up, we have Jason Marley. Jason Marley is going to Elma College, the Fighting Scots. Um, Jason, you've got a long uh, line of blood in your family and, uh, and the uncles and so forth. Um, how has that affected you in, in, in your basketball uh, career and so forth, um, uh, playing with the Marley days? Um, it, was, it was fun. It helped a lot because, uh, especially my brother, they pushed me extremely hard my dad and my brother so and and it just made me get that much better so it was kind of nice having um, the expectations and the knowledge of them so it was fun okay you got thundering dan in the family and, and your dad was a great player your brother your two sisters are great players your mom is there any of them that, that can beat you one-on-one -on -one? <laughs> uh definitely not my dad but uh <laughs> ryan beats me still so he's He's done. Now, is he still playing? He's, is, this, or is this college days over? Uh, he's done, but uh, he stays in shape, so he, he's he got about five inches on me. <laughs> All right, so you, um, in your spare time, I know you work uh, at the movie uh, in the Celebration Cinemas. Um, give us a, you know, while you're up here, give us a, a, a little uh, review on, you know, an upcoming movie or maybe a favorite movie. <laughs> So right now, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is out. Uh, that's a good one. But um, yeah, for the older people, Snatched. My mom hated it, but a lot of a lot of people are going. So Taco Tuesday is coming up. Uh, tickets are cheaper on Tuesday. Five dollars. So. No tacos. But. Why is it called Taco Tuesday? Tickets are cheaper on Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, all right, uh, Jason. Uh, we're real proud of you. And, family and that, that Marley name you uh, upheld the, the tradition well. Best of luck to you at Alma College. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Marley, welcome to Alma. Yeah. Next up we have Maddie Waters. Maddie is going to Central Michigan University. Or Chips, I like to see you. Maddie, you were uh, one of the high you know, maybe one of the highest recruits in West Michigan as far as a female athlete. Uh, tell us a little bit about the recruiting process. Is that something you enjoyed? Was it stressful? Um, tell us a little bit about uh, how that went for you and, uh, and maybe what led to you going to CMU. All right, so in the heat of the moment, it was definitely very stressful and uh, brought tears, brought smiles, everything like that. But looking back at it now, I'm uh, really appreciative of my family for always supporting me through all of it and stuff like that. And I realized all the different people that helped me make my decision and for all the people that stuck with me through the ups and downs and they're thinking I'm going here but then thinking I'm not and stuff like that. So it was definitely a learning experience and I'll always be grateful for it. You know, I've, I've uh, all of us in Rockford are real proud of your accomplishments, being on green teams and all state teams and all conference teams. Is there one more award that maybe you're really, uh, is really special to you, or maybe an award that you're most proud of? Um, I would say the awards that my teammates voted for me, not necessarily like the, I, I appreciate the other awards, but the awards coming from my teammates definitely mean the most because it's, I don't know, the relationships I go through them, they're definitely more meaningful. And now you and some of your some of the people that are also here. Actually, there's another award banquet. Uh, is that the Burger King award? Is that, is that the one tonight? Uh, 
Uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seems to me that would be pretty uh, pretty good award to win. But you get three sandwiches or anything like that? That'd be nice. <laughs> I, I can't tell you. Well, if you do let us, you know, let us know. Maddie, we're also real proud of you. And by the way, all of our athletes, when you look through the bi their biographies, many of these are four-time academic letter award winners. We have several student athletes that have a 4.0 or higher. Maddie is one of them with about a 4.1 uh, grade point average. How did you balance uh, playing basketball and, and doing all those things, um, staying active, and yet keeping and maintaining a, a grade average of over four? I would say my parents played a big part in it, uh, always pushing me to stay on the books, but also get gym time and stuff like that. So, and taking after like my older siblings with school and my older brother, especially with putting in time and him always yelling at me to get more and more time in the gym. So, definitely my family was a big factor in all the balancing and everything. Very good. Well, Maddie, we're real proud of you, and we're excited to see you play for the Central Michigan. Chippewas, good luck to you. These are our basketball players. Let's give them a All right, we are going to move in. We're going to kind of bounce around. Uh, um, I don't want anybody up here all by themselves, so some are going to group a little bit. We're going to go next to boys' soccer. Let's get our boys' soccer athletes up here. Kai, get you going first. This is Ty Dalton. Ty is going to uh, Hope College. Um, Ty, you've had a great career. Uh, your team uh, had a great season last uh, this past fall. Can you describe to us uh, a moment that you can reflect on, uh, maybe your greatest moment playing soccer? Maybe it wasn't high school. Maybe it was a club team or, or a score team way back when. Do you have maybe kind of a moment you can reflect on? Um, greatest moment would be, I don't know, it was a lot of good moments. It probably the best one to be. My senior year this year, we beat East Kemper twice, home and away, and then we lost some, but, <laughs> but yeah, but like we beat them twice at one conference, but just beating them because my sophomore and junior year and like freshman year, that we always struggle with them, so we finally went over the hump and beat them twice. Now you've got kind of a soccer family, tell us about uh, your siblings that play soccer as well. Oh yeah, uh, well my sister's at Hope too. There. And I got a younger sister, a freshman, and she's pretty good. Then another freshman, Max, and he's pretty good too. Yeah, yeah. Great, pretty good. A great soccer uh, family. Uh, any role models that you can uh, maybe remember that uh, you know you really looked on as, as that kind of the person you want to be, whether it be soccer or other things? Yeah, probably my dad he coached me like from up to like when I was 12, and like he really like pushed me to be like the best player I can be. And he also went to Hope, so kind of like following his footsteps. And yeah. So now, with your sister at Hope, did that influence you? No, oh, that'd be influence. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's all good. It's been fun. So. All right. Well, we wish you the best. Hi, Dalton, going to Hope College. Next up, we have Alex Baines. Alex, you're going to North Central. Yep. And what for? I, I'm guessing it's maybe North and Central here, or something like that. Um, where is it? Tell us a little bit about North Central. Um, it's a really neat area. It's in Naperville, Illinois, which is like maybe 30 minutes outside of Chicago. What do you know about their program? Uh, you, you know, have they had a successful team, or are you coming in and they're uh, rebuilding? Where are they at? Um, they're kind of so-so right now, but. Um, we have a lot of exciting freshmen coming in, so that should be a nice thing. And they've also played against Hope a few times, too. So, that's nice. <laughs> so you get the bad one. Is that on the schedule? Have you looked at the next year's schedule? Not, this, not next year, but okay. it's like, it seems like every two years. So okay. that should be interesting. Now, looking through your bio, you've also done some refereeing. Are you still doing that? Or are you active? Um, yeah, I've been a soccer referee for about nine years now. And I used to have to uh, make it make some quick money and it's nice to stay close to this part of the world. Awesome to give back and does that, uh, does that change your out outlook when uh, you're upset with a call that's made and you maybe don't necessarily agree with you have a little more compassion or not? Yeah, absolutely not. Well, I thought I would throw that anyway. Either. Best of luck, Alex. Alex Bain is going to the most special. Next up, we have Danny Anderson. Danny is going to Aquinas. You're going to be a saint in Aquinas College. 
Um, tell us a little bit about that last season um, in your high school career, maybe as, as a whole, um, but in particular that last season uh, where you, you guys won an OK conference championship. Uh, well, our first two years as sophomores and juniors, a couple of these guys played with us. We uh, lost a couple games, which we ended up in second or third place in the conference every year. So our senior year, we decided we just really want to work hard and end up coming on top. And that's what we did. We worked hard every day, came to practice, planning to work hard, and won a couple more games. So what do you know about the Aquinas' program? Uh, they're kind of right in the middle right now. They're, they went about 6 and 10 last year, so we're looking to rebuild a little bit this year. So what was your decision? Is it something you're studying there? What are you studying at Aquinas? Something in business, but I'm not 100% sure what it's going to be yet. What, what was the decision then to uh, go to Aquinas? Uh, I like kids close to home, so I'm going to be living at home. So you live with my parents. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right, Danny, thank you, uh, and best of luck to you at Aquinas College. We have Tyler Gerhorst. Tyler is going to Davenport, is that correct? Um, Tyler, tell us a little bit maybe about what it takes to get to the level. Um, you uh, won a lot of accolades at the end of uh, your senior year and so forth, recognized as one of the top players in the area. What type of training rituals and, and how much training have you had to do in order to get where you're at today? Well, uh, just hard work, being dedicated, and always working hard at practice, and I don't know, doing your best, I guess. So you scored over 40 goals your senior year. No, no you're during your high school career. You're during your high school career. Is there one, is there one of them that uh, you can remember maybe more than others that, that there was one really special goal, maybe the way you put it in there or it was a game winner? Do you remember anyone like that? Uh, yeah, you're in Haven at home this year. Game winning goal. That was probably my favorite this year. Up in the high corner or down low or what was that? I checked the keeper. Chip, All right, Chip the Keeper. What do you know about Davenport program? Uh, well, they're pretty new to the new conference. They're going to D2 this year, but they were four-time national champs at NAIA. So, well, they should be pretty good this year. Good. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, Tyler Terhorst going to Davenport. Those are our great soccer players. All right, just so a couple of Martin alone. We're going to bring up our cheerleader and a member of our crew team together. Uh, kind of a little different spectrum, but if we could bring uh, uh, bring up James and Alexis. Who's going first? All right. We just had the Michigan fight song on a minute ago. I don't know if you recognize that, but uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about crew. Uh, you know, that's not a, maybe a traditional sport like uh, what some of uh, the people in the audience are used to. Uh, plan. Tell us a little bit about what it is and how you set up the races and the different uh, styles of boats and how many people are in boats. What can you tell us about just a kind of quick version of what is crew? Okay, uh, well it's, it's rowing so then you have different sized boats with different amounts of people and they all, there's a bunch of different events that you can enter into. There's the most prestigious that goes like uh, Varsity eight, so then there's eight rowers, and it's just basically the best eight guys you got, and that's really where you see you know, who's the fastest. And then there's also lightweight events, so you got to be under 150 pounds for high school. And then there's four man boats or two man boats, single boat, quite a variety. Tell us a little bit about the season. You just finished the state finals. I know the boys finished third, but as a, as a whole team, we finished first in the state. What's up next? Tell us a little bit about how this season's been going. Okay. Um, well, at the Midwest Championship Regatta, that's like our qualifier to go to nationals. And so what you do is you, there's like first through third, first through fourth, depending on the event, you can qualify for nationals for each given boat. And then my varsity four boat that I was a part of qualified. So, Nationals is this coming weekend, maybe Thursday morning. And where is that at? New Jersey. In New Jersey. Well, good luck to, to uh, your team. How many uh, different boats are we, are we sending out there? Three. Uh, junior varsity four uh, and women's. Uh, a men's varsity four and then a girl's lightweight eight. All right, what do you know about the, uh, the rowing team at Michigan? Uh, it's one of the best club teams in the country. Uh, they compete with even like the Ivy League schools, which are 
aren't the best in the country. And then, you know, they keep up with them and sometimes beat them with their varsity. So. Now, where do they train? I've been to Michigan. I don't remember any rivers or ponds that kind of go through there that I can recall. Do you know where they train? And where, do they have like a boathouse like we do? Yeah, it's, I think, like, I think they say like, it's like a 10 minute bike ride or something, so it's pretty close. Okay. And yeah, a boathouse just like us on a river, and they, they call it Argo Pond. And then we actually scrimmaged there earlier in the season against a high school team that practiced on the same spot. So, all right. Been there before, so. Well, James, we wish you the best of luck uh, with the rowing team at U of M. James Anderson. <laughs> Next, we have Alexis Butler. Alexis is going to Grand Valley State University, and she's going to be on the cheer squad. I know there's a lot of different varieties or variations of cheer teams at the collegiate level, which exactly team are you going to be with, or teams? I am on the co-ed team, so... So will you be like competing, or is it more of a support group for the football, basketball? It's actually both. We have a nine, our season is nine months right now. We're into the, like, supporting the sidelines, I guess, for all home basketball games and football games. And then as we get later in the season, we'll be going to I believe it's a different place to year for nationals, but it's usually Daytona. So it's kind of a combination of competitive and sideline. You did both in high school. Do you have a, a kind of a favorite? Would you rather go out on the mats and actually compete for a score, or or do the stunts and tumbling and cheering out a football or basketball team? I definitely like the going out on the floor and competing more than I do the sidelines, but I still enjoy sidelines. What, what do you know about Grand Valley's uh, competitive team? Well, last year. Well, the year before, they won nationals, and then this year, they lost by .23. So this year, we're very competitive, and they're coming up with a strong angle that we have to work harder than we did. And I think that's be perfect for us to reach our goals. Awesome. What are you studying at Grand Valley? Athletic training and physical therapy. Athletic training? Well, we can always uh, use you back here maybe in a few years. So best of luck to Al Alexis Butler going to Grand Valley. Program. We have three athletes who are committed to uh, play collegiate football. Come on up, guys. They were all sprinting to see who could go first. <laughs> first up is Billy Potter. Billy is uh, playing uh, football next year uh, at Taylor University. Um, I'm a little familiar with Taylor. I actually have a son that attended there for a while. Why did you choose Taylor, and what is it uh, going to have uh, for you? Yeah, so I went down there for a couple of visits my junior year, and uh, got to know the coaches and the area. It's a real small school in the area, and I, that's kind of what I was looking for. And uh, my dad also went there, so there was a little bit of alumni kind of thing going on there. So I heard plenty of stories. And, uh, what do you know about their uh, program, their team? Uh, are they are they rebuilding? Have they had some success? Where are they at? Yeah, so last season they had an okay season, but they have a strong senior class this year at the quarterback. And last year they had a great tight end, so um, they got something to look after. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Is that kind of where they had you slotted as a tight end? Yeah, for now. So. <laughs> okay. So you played uh, uh, for Rockford. What was the best part of being a Ram uh, football player? Oh, jeez. There's so much. Um, I don't know. I think. For me, it's probably going to be off the field, like seeing people in the streets wearing and stuff and talking about it and you know, talking about the Friday night game and stuff. I, my last thought is, uh, is there somebody that uh, you uh, kind of mentored you that you've been looking up to as you played uh, football and you get ready to play uh, next year at Taylor? Yeah, actually, uh, I think one of my biggest motivators is Pat Zingle, the head football coach who recently passed away, but he was a head football coach at Northwood University. Mm -hmm. And uh, play quarterback at Hillsdale, and we're a really close family friend with the new one, so I kind of had to watch him coach for a while, and play with my passion with him. Awesome. Well, best of luck. Billy Potter going to Taylor University. <laughs> Next up is Cole Van Centers. Cole is going to Valparaiso. Cole, you were a uh, captain of the, the Ram football team, and, and uh, a lot of programs, uh, some, some, some of our coaches maybe don't put a lot of uh, and a lot of um, 
a lot of um, responsibilities on Captain. But for the football program, I, I do. I am a little bit aware and, and kind of have some background with it. Tell us a little bit about what it meant to be a captain on the football team. Well, first off, it's a huge honor. I mean, I mean to be voted a captain by sixty some guys is, is, is awesome. Um, and, and having you know, it just comes with a lot, a lot of responsibilities. Um, you know, from just making sure we're you know we're busting in practice every day and you know making sure guys that we're just. We're staying straight in the classroom too, and everything like that. So, and it's a, it's a huge honor, like I said. So, especially at a, at a program like Rocker. So, you, you chose Valparaiso. What is what do they have to offer you? What was your deciding factor going there? Um, for uh, first things, academics first. It's a great academic school. Um, uh, great academics. Uh, I get money for school, which is great. It helps me get to college, and it's good football too. So, very good. Tell us if there's a uh, you watch pro games. Is there a pro player you kind of look up to and say that's a guy I'd like to be? Um, I have to think about that. Uh, who do I want to play like? Sure. So Ray Lewis. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Ray Lewis. All right. He's kind of reckless and tough, hard hitter. He's crazy. Dude. Yeah, he's looking crazy. <laughs> well, very good, Cole. Best of luck at Valparaiso, Cole Van Center. <laughs> and next up, we have Nick Isley. Nick is going to Wayne State to play football. Um, Nick, you were a three-sport athlete. Uh, several, several other uh, students, student athletes, are here today. But at a school our size, um, that's a that's a pretty uh, pretty high task in order to keep at the level that you did in three sports. Tell us how difficult maybe that was, or maybe it wasn't difficult for you. But tell us your thoughts on being a three-sport athlete. Um, I don't really think it was that hard, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so. Uh, now you're playing football in college, but uh, is that your favorite sport to play, or for some of the other ones, uh, um, maybe maybe you didn't have a chance to play college, but uh, football is your passion, or where are you at with those? Um, I would say football is my favorite for like the games, but I do enjoy track because it's more social and we get to talk a lot more. And that's not like you don't get in trouble for talking to people. So. <laughs> Football program had a lot of wins uh, with these three three guys being in charge of the, the program and, and kind of leading the program over the last few years. Uh, can you remember maybe uh, Nick, a, a particular game or a particular victory over the last few years that maybe was most meaningful to you? Maybe the greatest Ram win during your uh, time here at Rockford. I would say this year uh, against Hudsonville in the playoff game when we came back and we lost to them the week before and we beat them that time. I think that was really memorable to me. Now, you, uh, are you slated to be a running back? I know that's kind of what you did here at Rockford. Have they given you uh, some ideas why you might uh, play at Wayne? Um, at first, they recruited me to play linebacker, which was kind of different because I've never played defense before. But um, the head coach at Wayne State is giving me the opportunity to play running back until that doesn't work out and then I'll play defense. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to have you stick to it and give it a try. And uh, who knows, maybe it'll work out. Is like Randy Garner still there playing? Yeah, he is. And he's, he's playing as linebacker, so it could be you and Randy. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Rams, a linebacker. What do you know about Wayne State's program? Oh, well, I know they had the same record as we did last year. Um, they're not bad, but they're not at the top of the league either. But they're, to they're towards the top. All right, but with you, with the addition of you and your uh, uh, classmates that are going in uh, this year, you'll, you'll push them towards the top. Oh, yeah, we'll be at the very top. All right, well, best of luck to you, uh, Nick. You guys are going to win the All right, next up, we'll go to Girls Across. We bring up a couple young ladies playing Girls Across. First, we have Sicily. Long as soup. I'm not gonna try it again. I, I'm not, I, I have more trouble saying where you're going. Is it Kennesaw State? Yeah. Where is that? And tell us uh, what you what. what I, I, it's a college I'm not real familiar. I've heard about it, but where is it at? And what, what can you tell us about? Um, it is right outside of Atlanta, Georgia, just north of that. Um, it's about the same size as Michigan State, and yeah. Why did you choose to go there? That's kind of a long ways from home. I mean, that's why you chose it. Um, yeah, um, I wanted the opportunity being an only child at home. I love my parents, but they do do everything for me. 
and I wanted the opportunity to go and like do something for myself and get outside of Rockford. And so when the opportunity came about, I knew that that was God's way of telling me where to go. Now, Coach made a comment that I think there's a quote in your book, something you're always smiling, you're always smiling on the field. Is it because you enjoy lacrosse so much? You enjoy being with the young ladies that you're playing with? Uh, is it you enjoy the competition? What keeps you smiling on the uh, lacrosse field? Um, I, would, I would say I have some amazing girls that I've got to play with, and we've been playing for so long, and the relationships that I've established with them um, just make the sport so much more fun. Is there a favorite moment you kind of reflect on, or maybe moments? When you look back on uh, your career being a Rockford lacrosse player, um, I would say one of my favorite moments was winning a state championship, um, and I got to do that with like two of my best friends. So that was an amazing experience. And you've got one more on the road. Tell us a little bit where where we're at with the season. Uh, maybe that some of the people out here that don't follow the cross. Uh, where are we at right now? Um, obviously, we just won the OK Red Championship. What's next? Um, so this year we brought up a ton of new kids. We um, had four freshmen coming into this year. So we were a really young team and I would say it was been amazing to like see them grow into the players that they're going to mature and become. Um, and yeah, we're starting the road to playoffs tomorrow. All right. Well, Cicely Bonga Soup. Bonga Soup. Bonga Soup. Bonga Soup. Cicely is going to Kenosha State. All right, this was a little easier to say. Sam DeVore is going to Elma. I can say that. <laughs> By the way, Sam helped me uh, this this last trimester. Actually, Cicely started as an intern, but she only lasted two days, three, three days, and uh, she ended up taking a co-op job. She didn't get fired. She, she didn't necessarily quit. She just wanted to do co-op. She got. She's doing a lot of work getting paid. Meanwhile, Sam uh, didn't have that opportunity. Sam, you had an opportunity to win a few state titles. Uh, the, the team's going for another one. Is there one title that's more important, uh, or or which title you, you feel was the greatest accomplishment? Honestly, I think uh, last year winning our conference was the biggest deal because we had such a rivalry with East Grand Rapids, and we lost them the first time by one point. It was a really frustrating game, and we beat them the second time, so that's exciting. And you do a lot of volunteer work with uh, uh, different groups, different organizations, and uh, yet you're still practicing lacrosse. You're doing a, a great job in the classroom over a four point. How do you balance all that? And how, how, what's your secret to all that? I don't have a secret. It gets stressful. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I really just try to keep everything as organized as I can. Tell us about some of your volunteer work. Well, I mean, Throughout the year, I'll do, I do obviously volunteer work for student council, and I'll do stuff for kids who basket, and every year our lacrosse team goes out, and we do a, we go to God's Kitchen, and we work there, too. All right, Elma College, what can you tell us about the girls' lacrosse program? Elma College girls lacrosse, they're about middle of their conference, Okay. and I'm really excited to go play there. All right. Yes. All right, well, we're excited to have you go there. Sam, before going to Elma, this is a really good job. All right, next we'll bring up the swimmers divers. We actually have one diver and uh, some swimmers, so if those young ladies want to come forward. Hunter in Tazia. Is that pretty close? Yeah. All right. I was telling Hunter I, knew, I never really know how to pronounce it very good, but I'm learning. Hunter's going to Eastern Michigan University. Hunter holds, he actually holds uh, several several records. Are they pool records or are they Rockford records? Tell us a little about the records that you hold. Okay. I have um, the, like, Rockford and Rockford is like it's like a team record. Um, the 200 and the 400 for your relay. So it's just like the fastest time to ever run a record. The city's up to the two. All right, and uh, uh, what event then are you um, most famous for as far as swimming? What do you see yourself swimming in college? Um, I, say, I would say I'm best known for the 50 free, and I'm swimming the 50 and 100 in college. Now you're also playing water ball. Right, Great. in high school. Right, I got right now. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that season because you just had a big win last week over Hudsonville. What's up next for the girls' water polo team? 
Um, yeah, so that was a pretty fun win because we upset them and we've lost to them a couple times this season. So that was really exciting. And then we are working for our state championship, which is in two weeks. So, so we have a number one, number one seed in, in, from our regional coming out. And, and that is at Hudsonville? That Hudsonville. We'll have to beat them at their pool. Yes. And we won't see them until the, the final game. If we make it to the final game, yeah. Then well, we're going to make it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, is, there, is there an opportunity in college to play uh, pole? Is that something that you really just need to concentrate on swimming or um, don't you really have that opportunity? Yeah, I don't think Eastern has a pole team, but I would go as far as the so. Why did you choose Eastern? Um, honestly, um, my coach, Lynn, he's like a really knowledgeable coach and he knows a lot about what he's doing. And then when my mom and I visited campus, I just like really felt at home there. And whenever I went other places, I would always compare it to Eastern. So I knew that's, that's where I wanted to be. All right, well, best of luck, Hunter. And best of luck this, uh, in a couple weekends here when you uh, go over to Hudsonville and, and work for a state championship in polo. Yes, thank you. Going to Eastern Michigan University. <laughs> Next up, we have a guy from Mackenzie Smith. Mackenzie is going to Colorado Mesa. Yeah. Where is that at? I'm assuming it's in Colorado. Is it part of one of the, the major universities or is it a smaller school in Colorado? Tell us a little bit about it. It's a smaller school. It's in Grand Junction, Colorado. It's about four hours west of Denver. And yeah, it's just a really small school. Not many people know about it, which I like. So. Have you been there? Uh, yeah, I went there for a visit in October. Now, have you, you enjoy the Colorado area? I myself had a chance to get out there once in just beautiful area. Is that what took you out there? Is it the school? Um, it's definitely the school. They have a, a really strong dive program, and I like how it was a really small school in campus, and it was also a gorgeous area. And when I went there in October, it was my first time, and I completely fell in love with it. Tell us about your best drop, your best dive. Your, in other words, uh, your signature dive. What, what is it? A little bit, so you can go run off more than one. <laughs> um, some flips and some twists. I don't know. <laughs> you, don't have a, you don't have a signature guy? Um, not really, no. You just go to all? Not really. <laughs> well, you better get good because you're going to go down and pick college. What are you going to study out there in uh, Colorado? Right now, I'm majoring in business, but that will probably change. Now, you know, I watch uh, my daughter have to be a swimmer, and you know, during the diving competition, I was always worried if they were hit their head when they come up on their board. Have you had some scary moments like that? Yeah, when I was 10, I did a backflip, and I landed waist up on the board, and I just ate diving board. <laughs> and you, but you had enough uh, ambition to get out there and try again? Two years later, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Hunter, best of uh, luck to you. I, I'm sorry, uh, Mackenzie, best of luck to you as you go off to uh, Colorado. Mackenzie Smith. Our next swimmer is Sydney McGowan. Sydney is going to Oakland, Oakland yeah. University. We actually have several people going out to uh, the Grizzlies, I think. Oakland Grizzlies. Yeah. Um, now you, you also hold some records, some individual records as well. Tell us about uh, those um, records that you hold here at Rockford High School. Okay, um, I'm part of the 200 medley relay, so we the brushstroke line. And I also have the 200 IM team record, the 100 breast team record, the 200 freestyle <coughs> team record. Sure that's also the state record. Also a state record. That is also eight-time All-American. Yeah. What does it What does it take to get to All-American? Is that based on times? Is it? Because obviously you're not competing against individuals in other states. How does that work? Um, you kind of are actually. So at the end of the season, the coach will submit your best time, and if it's the one of the top 100 times in the nation, then you're considered All-American. Okay. And so what uh, What actually do you see yourself doing uh, at Oakland as far as events? Um, have they talked to you about that, or what do you foresee happening when you're there? Yep, I'm definitely going to be a brush shirker there. Okay. They have one other brush shirker right now, so I have some shoes to fill. All right, and um, I'm sure there's some of these others. Uh, I didn't check out my GPA, but you one of the highest GPAs here, 4.3, something like that. Uh, uh, I did not have quite that high myself. Um, how did you manage to do that? And, and, uh, Tell us about your grades and your, your schedule. How do you maintain the level you do in the, in the pool, but also in the classroom? It's definitely difficult, but I've learned that if you reach out for help when you need it, then it definitely gets easier. Very good. Well, this is Cindy McDowell. She's going to Oakland University. Give up for Cindy McDowell. Next up, we have girls' soccer. We did have three of them, but we just, we're down to 
two. I don't think it's a candy shop. All right. We have Elise Lacourt and Seth Lacourt. They are twin sisters, if you didn't know that. Elise is going to Akron, correct? Yeah. And you are going to um, play on their soccer program. Um, you played, uh, you know, something I found out actually the other day when I looked through. Your freshman year, both of you played, didn't play for the high school. What made you decide to kind of come out for the high school team? And has, has that been a good experience for you guys? Uh, tell us a little bit about the club experience and the uh, high school. Well, the club experience is more competitive, but I definitely wish I would have played for my high school freshman year. It was more, it's more fun to, and more like um, intense to be able to play in front of a huge crowd and everything for your school. And you also have a 4.2, something like that, a great point average. Maybe you can give us a little insight. How do you do that? Uh, it's definitely a lot of time management. Uh, I definitely couldn't do it without my parents. They helped me a lot through uh, time definitely time management. What do you know about Akron's program? Uh, we're rebuilding right now. We got a new coach a couple years ago. So she's doing good right now. We have a big class coming in. We have 14 freshmen coming in next year. So she's rebuilding and she's looking to, um, last year she, we made the MAC conference for the first time in a few years. So she's doing well so far. All right, and uh, what do you plan to study there? Mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. Best of luck to you when you go out to Akron. Elise McCourt. Elise McCourt. Good afternoon. Now we have Seth McCourt going to Indiana, Purdue. Is that correct? Fort Wayne University, Indiana, Purdue. Fort Wayne University, Indiana, Purdue. Indiana, Purdue, Fort Wayne University. <laughs> so is it affiliated with Purdue or is it affiliated with Indiana University or is it um, still that top? Well, I like to say it's like the baby of Purdue and Indiana, so they like it's their baby. Well, okay. Yeah. I like that. All right, so um, what's it like playing with a twin sister uh, in all these years? Has that been stressful? Is she kind of a pain? Uh, or is it, is it kind of something you enjoy and they kind of challenge each other and, and tee off each other? How's that, how's that work out? Um, yeah, it's definitely a privilege because I always have uh, an extra um, practice partner, so we go out in the yard, you know, makes you better because you always have someone to practice with when most kids, you know, don't have that. Um, we always, like, push each other, like, if I'm doing bad in the game, um, she be like, come on, Seth, pick it up, or, like, um, if she's doing, like, not her best game, I'll be like, come on, Lisa, you can do better, and, like, just to always have that, you know you have that encouragement right beside you is, like, it's unbelievable. Can't describe it. Now, I know injury is kind of a part of the game, and you we were, uh, we were all concerned. I know you were as well. You walked around with the knee brakes for a while. Tell us yeah. about uh, uh, your, your, your little steer there and how you kind of fought back. And are you healthy now? What's going on with this part? Yeah, I'm, I'm healthy now, except when this one tackle just tweaks it every time, but it'll, it'll probably be fine soon. Um, so I injured my knee with, um, I'm not sure who it was against. Do you remember? A scrimmage against the JV. So, yeah, a JV player really got me. Tackled me hard and um, yeah, my knee just I felt like kind of like popped back and I ended up um, my meniscus was out of place so they just popped it back in and it hurt for a little bit but I I, I tend to get my toughness from my grandpa I like to say so um, yeah I just fought through it I mean it wasn't gonna hurt it more so awesome so and you're one of the teams uh, again that is still competing tell us a little bit about where you guys are at in your season just finished up the conference. What's up next for you guys? How'd you finish in the conference? I'm sure everybody wants to hear that. I know, we're first in the conference. So um, everyone always makes fun of the women's soccer team for having the only empty banner in the gym. And so now it won't be the only empty banner in the gym. And um, What's up next? District. So next Tuesday we play Wyoming. And then we play Grand Ledge. And then we'll probably see Forest Hill Central, which is the number one team in the state ranked in the nation in the district finals. So. Yeah, very tough district. You got yeah. Kentwood is up there. I know Caledonia is up in the top top bracket. So uh, certainly uh, some competitive games ahead. But best of luck to uh, our soccer players as they move forward. We've got the Laporte Twins going off to college. Best of luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we will go to softball. We'll bring tennis up at the same time. I don't want Paige to feel lonely. So.
All right, first we have Lucy McCarthy. Lucy is going to Elba College, uh, joining a couple people, right? Two people. And uh, why, did you, why did you choose to Elba? What, uh, what, what do you know about their tennis program? Um, right now, their tennis program has a new coach. He is new from like maybe two years ago, and they're trying to rebuild. Um, so I'm very excited to go there and try to make their team better. And tell us a little bit about where we're at. Once again, it's a spring sport. Uh, girls are still playing. They just came off a great conference. What's up next? Tell us about a little, a little bit about the conference play. Yeah, um, we co won conference this year with West Ottawa. So going into regionals, we really wanted to win. So we went out tough, and we won regionals by seven points. And uh, now we have states in probably like a week next Friday. All right. And now, have you played singles, doubles? Um, what are you, where are you at now? What do you like playing better? Tell us about the kind of maybe the differences between that. Um, I played on the JV team for two years, and I played doubles my first year, and singles and doubles my sophomore year. And then last year on varsity, I was four doubles, and this year I'm two doubles. So when I go to college, um, I get the privilege of playing both. All right. Well, best of luck uh, doing that. Best memory in uh, playing, uh, playing tennis. I mean, something happened this year. Uh, best tennis memory. Um, last year, uh, we swept conference and we swept regionals, and that was probably my best memory because it was it was my first year on a varsity team and. We swept them all, so. All right, well, Lucy, best luck to you. you Lucy McCarthy going to Elma College. <laughs> Next, we have Ronnie Ducharme. Ronnie is going to Adrian College. Tell us a little bit about Adrian and why you selected it. Well, um, I guess Adrian's a little bit from the Rockford. It's in the middle of nowhere, so, you know. Uh, it'll be a new experience. What do you know about their tennis program? Uh, their tennis program, they can be top, uh, I'd say top, they're second and third every year because one's uh, Kalamazoo and they're national ranked, so they're pretty tough. So um, we look for, I look forward to the challenge of trying to get that second spot and compete with uh, Kalamazoo one year. Now you, you've also helped us out, I know um, when, whenever coach is looking for a tournament manager, I know you helped out with the, uh, some of the events. Tell us about that, and is that kind of stressful? Is, would you rather play tennis or uh, do the scoring? Um, I'd probably rather play because, you know, scoring is, if you, get, if you screw up, uh, parents are always on you, so. Um, I'd rather play myself, and um, I love watching, but I get more nervous watching my sister and the girls team than actually playing, so I prefer playing. All right, now uh, Lucy talked a little bit about the different singles, doubles. Um, throughout your career, what did you play and what did you like best? And what do you see yourself maybe playing in college? Yeah, so my uh, career, I started on the JVB team and um, then went JVA, or sophomore year, and then junior year, I went to, um, I played three doubles on the varsity team, and this past year, um, I made it all the way to the top five, one singles. So it was a long journey, and, um, and Adrian, I'm going to get to play both, so I'm pretty glad about that. Well, awesome. And uh, Adrian College, what are you going to study there? Uh, I'm going to go into sports management. Very good. We've got another guy in sports management. Best luck to you. Ronnie Ducharme is going to Adrian College. <laughs> Next we have Paige Treasy. Paige is going to Indiana Westland. 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 <laughs> yeah. We'll go with that. All right. Paige has had a uh, great uh, career here at Rockford playing softball. You had some walk-off hits this year. Tell us maybe about a couple of those. Uh, last last inning, team down, and Paige is up to bat. I, I personally witnessed a couple different times, and there were some on the road that I didn't get a chance to see. Tell us a little bit about that. Actually, I you witnessed both. But... What? You never had any on the road? Um, oh. Well, I think they were a little bit more glorified than they needed to be, thanks to Jason Marley. but. Um, you know, I started off my season kind of rough with some injuries, and so I didn't start the lineup as high as I normally would feel like I would have. So um, it's harder for me to get RBIs because I'll be lower in the lineup and we'll start at a different point in the game. But this year we were playing Grand Haven and we were losing 4-1, to one, um, and it wasn't like the nicest day out. It's kind of cold, and so. Uh, but like the whole time the team, we were down, but we all agreed that we weren't going to lose. I mean, we, no one felt like we were going to lose. And, um, four to one, going to the bottom of the seventh, and someone gets on.
pretty sure there's already an out and then Whitney Park drove in someone that there was two people on, so it was four to two, and uh, I went up there and everyone was telling me just to settle down, like, don't try to do too much, and I went up there thinking base hit, and the first pitch was kind of right there, so I just went with it. It's the only home run I have this year. It's kind of a big one, though. Okay, so that was awesome to see. And obviously that was a big win. Uh, right now we're tied at, at the top of the conference with Granville. Tell us a little bit about the season, where we're at. Well, we're actually solely in first right now. Granville took a, a hard loss to West Adler last night. That was kind of an upset, which helped us out. You know that. Yeah, so, and uh, we actually played Grand Haven again yesterday, and we played from behind twice against them. And we were losing 9-3 in the second game, and we came back and won 16-10 uh, in the last inning. So it was a great team win. Um, which put us solely in first, and we're hoping to get a win against Hudsonville tomorrow and take it to South Lake Tech Conference Champs since 08. It's been a little while. Well, best of luck. And then we're hosting districts. Tell us a little bit about uh, what's coming up then. Oh, uh, yes. We're hosting districts, and so is baseball, which will be really fun. Um, our district is pretty tough. Uh, we're going to face Lowell, I think, in the finals if we make it there, when we make it there. Um, and they've got a really solid pitcher, a solid catcher, a really good center fielder, and we just played them last weekend in the tournament. And they didn't throw their ace, and we didn't throw our ace. It was a good game, so it was fun. I know uh, people are looking through the program. One of your accomplishments is Mr. E's intern. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. No comment? <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a good time. Um, uh, this is the first year I chose not to play volleyball, which was a hard decision to make just because I love the girls. But um, stepping in and getting to work with you was a fun time. I got to see what you do behind the scenes and give me a little bit more of appreciation for you in the Rockford Athletic. Um, Department, and I now see why you are the way you are, and I really. <laughs> so, thank you for the opportunity, and don't ever take my uh, picture board down in your office. Oh, yeah, I've got plenty of pictures of you in my office. Thank you, uh, thank you for doing that. Please, although Jason dropped a few on I, I moved it, don't worry. Okay. All right, well, these guys are playing at tennis and softball college. Uh, best of luck to you. Uh, all of them are We're winding down, just got a few more left. Let's bring up our track runners. Got a few uh, individuals that are doing track and field. That's you just doing them, no Molly? All right. Well, first we have Tyler Brenner. Tyler is one of those individuals who's going to be in Grizzly also. He's going to Oakland University. Tyler, you're also a three sport athlete. Tell us a little bit about that. What sports did you play and, and um, how hard was it to, uh, to play at a varsity level at, at a school like Rockford uh, and Leonard in three sports? Well, I played basketball, football, and ran track. Um, I didn't play football my senior year, but yeah, I kind of like mixed up. I think it was too hard. Now, now what, uh, what track events uh, are you uh, best at and uh, what do you see yourself running in, in college? Um, I'm best at the 400 and 200. Um, I'll be running both of those races, but I'm mainly at 400. But also, uh, I'll be running 4x4. Four four so our team qualified for the Michigan meet, which is the state championship for the team championship. Did you qualify for any events then uh, in the following weekend for the individual championships? Um, I did. I'm running the 400 for the third year in a row. Um, and I qualified for the 200, but I'm not running that. And my relay, my relay team, the 4x2 and 4x4, also qualified. So, yeah. okay. Will we have a chance to win in those? Yes, we're ranked first for the 4x2, second for the 4x4, I'm ranked second for the 400. So, yeah. So that's coming up uh, at East Kentwood here in a couple of weeks. Um, maybe a third favorite memory, um, maybe it's not in the track, maybe one of the other sports, but uh, something you kind of take away from your uh, playing uh, sports here at Rockford High School. Um, probably my sophomore year um, when I went to the States for the first time, I didn't eat for 24 hours because I was so nervous. So yeah, I still performed okay, I got eight, but yeah. All right, well, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, you've got some uh, uh, some classmates who are going to go to Oakland with you, so you're going to see some familiar faces on uh, campus. Tyler Brenner going to Oakland University. <laughs> Next up, we have Olivia Rodemaker, who is also going to Oakland University, and she's going uh, there to participate in track. We also played uh, volleyball. Um, but you're going to, to, to track, correct? What events uh, do you do, and what do you 
What are you doing now uh, as far as events and what do you see yourself doing at Oakland? Um, well, right now I run hurdles, so I'm in the 100 hurdle event, the um, 300 hurdles, and then I'm also in the 4x2 and the 4x4. Um, I'm stronger in the 4x4 and the 300 hurdles, so they're going to have me be running 400 hurdles next year. That's going to be fun. And I think I'll probably be running the um, 400. I'm sure they'll have me do that in the 4x4 as well. Maybe not next year, but that's something. I, you know, watching the hurdles, uh, you know, that's a tough, tough one. You're, you're grinding it out. I see a lot of people wipe out when they're they triple those things. You ever do that in, like, face plants? Um, I've fallen in practice, like, a few times, but the only time I've ever fallen in a race was my sophomore year at the Michigan State Invite. Um, I was running the prelims for the 100 hurdles, and I was beating everyone by at least three hurdles, and I tripped and fell on my face in the last one. And I could have got up and finished, but I just laid there because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> There's actually a picture of it, but yeah. It's like a YouTube? We... Um, I don't know. Probably just a picture. Mr. Wallace takes the pictures, but it's kind of ingrained in my brain, so. Um, why did you choose Oakland? Is there something that you're studying there? I mean, what you're studying? Uh, tell us a little bit about why, um, why you chose Oakland. As of right, well, originally I had thought of I wanted to study international business and like do French. And so I talked to my counselor about it, and he looked at all the schools in Michigan that are like do that. So I, I was interested in Oakland, so I went there for a visit, just like academically. I wasn't thinking about sports or anything like that. And I really love the campus, and I like the location and everything like that. So I read up on their track team, I contacted the coach, and just like sent him um, some film of me running, and just asked if there was a place for me. And he contacted me back and was like, "Yeah, like, we'd love to have you." And so I got to meet him and stuff, and go back down for an after a athletic visit. And so that's when I decided. Now, several people, and, and Tyler Mary and Kenny, actually, this two chose Oakland. Was it kind of a group decision or anything? Your roommates, uh, anything like that? Is there... No, no, nothing like that. I was actually really surprised um, that Tyler was going. Um, it was exciting to have another teammate with me, but I'm really with some other athletes, the like track athletes. Okay, so what do you guys teammates. know about their track team? Um, I know that they just became, their, their school in general just became D1, and they compete in the Horizon League. Um, and their track team, I know they have a lot of, they're graduating a few girls, but I know they have a lot of girls coming back, but they're going to be a few more hurdlers, so that's where I will be. Like, it's good that we're there. All right, your, your role model, somebody you really look up to? Um, definitely Sandy Cuneo. Uh, she was on um, fire trips. Yeah. <laughs> she runs at Central right now. She's a 400 runner. Um, Sprinter 100, 200, 4 by 1, 4 by 2, but she really became a 400 runner her last year, and that kind of inspired me to like, if she can do it, like I can do it too, like anyone like, can do it if they try hard enough and have a good attitude like her, so that's kind of inspired me a lot. Awesome. All right, Olivia and Tyler are going to run track. Both of them will be at Oakland University. Best luck to you guys. And in our last group, we've got a uh, wrestler and a couple volleyball players. Kendra DeYoung, Kendra is going to Grand Rapids Community College and uh, play volleyball. Kendra, you had a great year, you had a championship run there. Tell us a little bit about this past season, um, maybe some things that your team accomplished with, uh, that you accomplished for those of us that may have kind of forgotten about that. Well, we made it to the state finals, but we couldn't pull it out, but it was still an amazing experience and just being there in the atmosphere, just <coughs> soaking it all in, it's just really amazing. And, my freshman year, we made it pretty far, but we didn't get into the state tournament, so it was nice to like be back and like just re-experience it and get farther than we did before. Now you um, have, have played there at, at uh, you know Rockford. You have some favorite moments, memories. Was that the big thing that you can remember? Was maybe there was another game where you guys won a tournament championship or a conference championship? What's your kind of favorite memory of playing volleyball at Rockford High School? Um, my favorite game was probably the um, quarterfinals against Grand Haven. It was we were we won the first two sets, I think, and then um, we lost the second two, so we had to go into the fifth game, and we were down in the fifth game, like six to three, and then we were all just like I don't know emotions were going, and we were all just like, oh no, like this could be it. <laughs> So then we came back and it was just like a gun one. That's like the most I've ever felt it and it's just amazing like being able to overcome like being down and 
just with all my teammates, just bringing each other off. It was just really awesome. So you're going to Grand Rapids Community College. Any thoughts on what you'll be studying there? Um, I want to go into something in business, but I'm not sure exactly what. All right, and so a little bit about maybe somebody that's influenced you, uh, somebody that you kind of looked up to and then you roll out. Um, I don't have a specific individual, but just like players that are above me, like in older grades, just looking up to them and seeing what they can do and just making myself be better because of that. What do you know about the program at CC? Um, they won the national championship a few years back and then we, they made it last year to the national championships. They didn't win, but I'm hoping next year we can get there again. Well, I'm sure when you're there, you'll have a little flavor to it, and uh, uh, best of luck to you. Kendrick DeYoung is going to Grand Rapids Community College. Next up, we have Katana Smigo. She is going to Western Michigan University. Go Broncos. I can say that even though they're Chippewa. Uh, they've, they've had some great uh, successes. I don't know a lot about their volleyball program, though. What, what can you tell us about Western Michigan volleyball? good but this past year was definitely a building year and we have six freshmen coming in so we're going to really help to build and I just think that all of us are pretty strong and we're going to help appreciate the program. Now you uh, have won a lot of awards, a lot of accolades when we look through uh, some uh, being selected to some teams. Is there one maybe that you really look at and that's the one you're most proud of? Um, I don't really have one. I'm proud of just getting all the ones that I have and like working and getting all the just recommendations for it, and like, oh, my coaches help me just get to where I am and help me get all the ones that I got. Now, you're also on the track team. Did you qualify at all for um, to move on? I know you take place with the team event, but will you be participating in the state event there in a few weeks? Um, I qualified for the shot, but not this. I just throw. Um, I'm really excited. This is my first year throwing the state. Um, this is neat. So last year I didn't make it, but this year my first. So you play volleyball and, and uh, then you uh, also run track and or, or yeah. throw things in track, throw uh, business shots, <laughs> and also and then you have time to work at Pizza Hut. How do you want to do all that? Are you still working right no, now? No, not right now. I tried, but it was it didn't really work out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, so what do you plan on studying at Western Michigan University, and you know maybe why did you choose to go there? Um, I'm thinking about engineering right now, probably civil engineering. But I'm also looking at architectural design and just, I just like building things and making things. So anything along that line is what I'm interested in. Well, best of luck to you, Cassandra, and, and also in the, the upcoming uh, state meet here at East Kentwood in a couple of weeks. She's going to Western Michigan University to play volleyball. Thank you. <laughs> and next up, we have Andy Hansen. Andy is going to Davenport to wrestle. Sorry that you have to be last, Andy, but wrestling, I got it starts with a W, and I guess that's working. And we had 135 career wins, something like that, in high school. Um, had, had you always been on the varsity when you were a freshman? Did you work right in the lineup, or did it take you a while? Tell us a little bit about your road to uh, those 135 wins. Um, I definitely started off when I was younger, and I was not the best wrestler. I was definitely not a natural. But my freshman year, I think that was like my 10th year wrestling, and uh, I wasn't completely on the varsity lineup because I was sharing a spot with Jerry Bennett. So I was on the varsity team, but it was kind of half and half because we switched weight classes. But I definitely gave uh, gave my ups and downs to uh, get where I am today. Have you been pretty much uh, uh, the same weight class, or did you move up different weights? And how, how tough is that for uh, wrestlers to kind of balance and manage uh, their, their diet and training and all of that? Was that something that you would struggle with, or is that something that came kind of easy for you? I, I definitely struggled with uh, Managing my weight. My coach over there laughing because he knows I'm probably the worst weight cutter on the team. But uh, I wrestled 135 this year. My freshman year I was 112. My uh, sophomore year I was 125. My junior year I was 130. And then I bumped up 135 my senior year. But right now I'm probably, I think I paid up to 158. So I kind of <laughs> had to cut a little bit of weight to make 135. It definitely, definitely took a lot of discipline and uh, it, was, it was hard, but I managed it. Where do you see yourself? Uh Plus, get plugged in the lineup as far as weight wise and down for They talked about where they'd like yeah. to see you. What, what's up? They're looking at me for 141 or 149, depending on how much I want to cut and how much I can cut. Okay, you had a chance to wrestle in the individual state finals uh, down at the Palace for a few different times. Um, do you think of one of those as being your best best win, or is there maybe somebody else who maybe beat a ranked opponent? Uh, what's your best career win out of those 135? I've had a, a couple. 
good wins, but I think the win that I can remember the most is Granville this year. He was the, the kid I wrestled was uh he's been my rival for Granville. He's beat me a couple times. I've beat him a couple times, but it was coming down to the last couple matches. We haven't beat Granville in a couple of years, and uh, I ended up sticking him, pinning him for six points, and that kind of set us over the win. But we still had to get two more wins, and uh, Jeffers just got us the last one there, and then we ended up winning. But that was that was a fun night. Was, the place was rocking. I had to uh, be able to get out there. It was a uh, was a great night. Um, so everybody uh, wrestling, you know, I watch especially the WWF and so forth. Everybody has like a signature move, you know, like pile drivers and stuff. What's Andy Hansen's signature move? What's your best move? Um, it's definitely my shot. It's like a opposite side head inside single. So it's kind of like a sweep. I sweep their leg out. I, can, I don't know how to explain it to people that don't really know. Well, oh, Jason Marley come here to do that. <laughs> And it's got you it's got your two wins along the way, 135, correct? Yeah, is, that, correct. Is, that, is that right? That's a lot of wins in a, in a high school career. Congratulations and best of luck at Davenport. Congratulations to our volleyball. <laughs>